G'day folks, it's Rob here and in this week's aquaponic vlog we're going to be looking at uh, why chlorine is bad for aquaponic systems and how it led to me having to harvest my fish a little bit sooner than planned. So for you folks out there who aren't aware, chlorine is very toxic to fish even though it's put in our mains water supplies, um, our local water authority puts in chlorine to kill off bacteria so when the water makes it to our house eventually it's nice and clean for drinking. What the chlorine does is it kills off the cells on the gills uh, stopping the oxygen that's dissolved in the water making it into the bloodstream of the fish. So generally with aquaponics you either have to filter it out of the water or you can um, let it stand in an open vessel and let the chlorine off gas over a couple of days time. Another trick you can do is um, throw some bubblers in there, some air stones and that speeds up the process. Another way you can get it out of your water supply is by having an activated carbon filter. You can buy little ones that you can attach to your hose. We've actually got a um, three stage one that runs water through the whole house. Unfortunately we haven't changed the the filters for a while because we're renovating soon and I just wasn't going to worry about that system we'll probably get a new one. Chloramine is another additive that is put into water to purify it. It can be a little bit more problematic to remove because it is a little bit more stable in water. You can put in things like theosulfate and ascorbic acid and that will remove it. Uh, you can also um, UV treat it, uh, leave the container in open sunlight for a number of days and that will slowly remove, remove the chloramines or break it down actually. Um, and another way is just to run it through an activated carbon filter, the same um, sort of high quality carbon filter you'd use for chlorine and that will remove it from the water. Because I haven't been able to rely on the filter and the water's coming out of the tap smelling like chlorine again, I've been gassing out the chlorine uh, in the fish tank that the uh, camera is actually sitting on at the moment. From there all I do is open a valve in the base of the tank here and through a hose I can fill up the water in the sump tank. Now that's what's led to the bit of a catastrophe I had the other day. Um, every now and then I will clean this tank out because we have geckos running around and a little bit of their, um, their feces drops in the tank so I just like to clean it out. When I cleaned it out I never came back and closed off the valve from the hose. So when I moved the hose back into the sump tank uh, the other day after cleaning it out um, there was nothing to stop any water in here from entering into the sump tank. So the other day before we nipped on out to um, pick up Bianca's new secondhand buzz box I decided to uh, top up the top up tank so I put the timer on for roughly around about 30 to 40 minutes, I think it was around about 40 minutes, um, put the hose in here and I know that generally gives me around about 900 litres of water. Now I hadn't turned the valve off so while we were out over the four hours 900 litres of chlorinated water flowed through into my 2200 litre um, aquaponic system um, so poisoning the fish or severely damaging their gills. So when I came home um, as I do every night we, I come down to tuck the fish in make sure everything's flowing properly. I noticed they were swimming sideways and upside down not looking very healthy at all. I immediately did a nitrite and ammonia test they were both fine but I did notice the sump tank was very full realized my mistake I'd stuffed up big time and I had poisoned my fish with chlorine. The decision was made to um, harvest them then and there. There's if you catch it soon enough you can actually pull your fish out say in a small aquarium put them in some dechlorinated water and you may be able to um, nurse them back to health you don't repair the damage as such um, but yeah there is sometimes if it's a slight case of poisoning a chance that you can bring them around with my fish too large I had no water available to pop them in so yeah we just decided to harvest them yeah so basically a big stuff up on uh, my part so one of the ways I could have avoided this from happening in the first place is by placing the second valve that I keep meaning to do um, at the other end of the top up line. Generally when I'm topping up the, the sump tank I come down, I eyeball it, I see it's full enough and if there was a valve there I would have turned it off there then walked up to the tank here and then turned off the second valve so it would have been a little bit of a uh, fail safe in that respect. So um, yeah it's it's a big stuff up I'm really kicking myself that it happened but I, I thought you know it's a, one of these lessons that you folks can hopefully learn from my mistake. So so we'll go on down and we'll check the nitrite test uh, just to have a look what it's doing and also check the pH and just show you where it's sitting at today. So there we go folks the pH is sitting at 7.7 .7, or 7.8 it keeps jumping up to every now and then and that is because the water here um, does have that high pH. 
Now, I do have some water in the top-up tank that I'll be treating with some acid, and when that goes into the sump tank, that will bring the pH down. Now, ideally, um, with the fish in here, I've been keeping it 6.5 to um, 6.8, but because there's no fish in the system at the moment, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, I'm going to bring it all the way down to six because that's a fairly good pH for most of the plants we have in the system. As for the nitrate, I'm not too worried about that because <laughs> the amount of fish we had in there and the amount of feed they were getting, I always had far too much nitrates in here. Even though we've flushed through 900 litres of water um, through the system, we've still got well over probably 40 milligrams per litre or parts per million of um, nitrate in there. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, what I am doing for the time being though is I'm still tossing in a capful or two of the pellets into the fish tank and as they break down they will release ammonia into the system and that will be processed turned into nitrate. So it's a little bit slower than having fish eat it and then excreting it through their gills, the ammonia and ammonium, but at least I'm getting a little bit into the system. From here uh, what I'm thinking of doing is um, getting mum and dad's jade perch, uh, there are still some fingerlings available, and popping them in the system here. I was actually um, going to be a little bit cheeky and maybe buy a few extra, but I'll look after them in a little nursery basket in the system here. It won't be enough nutrient to uh, feed the whole system, but what I can do is take a couple of beds offline. Uh, the turmeric can be harvested and I can take that bed offline and just uh, leave this spice one and the um, two over the top of the sump tank. Um, so that's one thing I could do. Another thing I could do is, um, like I said, just continue throwing fish food in there. I don't really want to do that. I'd rather see that go to a mate um, who's coming around this afternoon to pick up the rest of the bag and let him feed his perch with it. I could add urine if I wanted to and that would keep the, um, the system ticking over. I won't do that though um, because we give our produce to other people and I know they'd feel a little bit icky about it. I could also use household ammonia as long as it's pure ammonia, no scents in there, no other additives, cleaning agents. You can add a little bit of that into the system just to feed it to keep the um, ammonia converting into nitrite and then nitrate. Um, so yeah, I think for the time being, until I can work out with mum and dad a final date to work on their system, I'll be adding some fish food in here. Um, you're not getting it all, sorry Hamish. Um, and um, then we'll, we'll um, end up throwing the jade perch in there. Just before we get on to the harvest side of the clip, folks, I wanted to let you guys know who haven't seen our clips before, uh, we do have a load of aquaponic clips and there'll be a thumbnail at the end you can click on to check out some DIYs and other uh, hopefully informative clips on aquaponics. Uh, if you have and subscribed already you can do so as well by clicking on the uh, little link down the bottom there um, under the video and also checking the bell icon when you check that bell icon it just means you'll be sent a notification whenever I upload a clip to YouTube and you can come along and say good day now onto the harvest uh, we took out 28 fish from the system and they are all harvested using ikijimi ikijimi if you're not familiar with it is a Japanese method of dispatching fish it's a brain spike it goes in there kills them very fast it's said to be the most humane method to dispatch fish by the RSPCA here in Australia once they were harvested I took them up into the house and I cleaned them I didn't um, scale them basically my, my pack is that bad at the moment I can't stand up for very long so I just cleaned them popped them on ice until the next morning uh, big mistake when I got out I found they had pretty much all frozen solid so we bagged them up and took them over to my parents place and they're living in the freezer there until we need them uh, just not enough room in our freezer at the moment uh, when they defrost though I will be scaling them before we cook them obviously so I've actually got a couple of clips on um, how we've harvested the uh, the fish from the system previously as well as I think there's a couple of recipes thrown in there as well so there'll be a, a link up there you can suss out if you're interested so um, on to the weights of the fish I thought I'd um, cover that as well because we do have a few people who are interested. I've got some cheat notes on my phone here. So there were 28 fish all up. There was 16 and a half kilograms or 36 um, and a half pounds in total. Uh, the average weight was 595 grams or 1.3 um, pounds. The smallest fish was 198 grams or 0.45 pounds and the largest fish was 884 grams or 1.95 pounds. So they weren't as large as they could have been. Um, as you saw from the nitrate levels before, I had more than enough nitrate coming out of those fish to um, feed the plants in the system. So I hadn't been feeding them their full 2% of body weight um, through summer. I'd probably only give, been giving them um, probably in all honesty less than half of that amount uh, just to keep the nitrates ticking over. Uh, when I harvested the fish I can guarantee you they weren't malnourished at all. 
they just hadn't grown to the size they possibly could have. It's been about a week since my little stuff up folks and I'm happy to report that the bacteria look to be doing fine. We've had no elevation in either the ammonia or the nitrite so I think they survived the mishap just fine. So I hope this cautionary little tale has helped a few of you folks out. Please keep your top-up system separate until all the chlorine's gassed out of the town water. Uh, before I go, I'm just going to do a little bit of a spruiking for myself. Got to pay the bills. I've got an online store of sorts where I sell uni seals. They're the rubber seals that you run pipes. You use to run pipes through the walls of your tanks and your filters. Said to be one of the cheapest in Australia by a chap the other day. Also Venturis and root pouches. So the link is down in the description. I'm also an affiliate for Aqua Gardening, which is one of Australia's premier aquaponics, hydroponics and pond suppliers. Their link is down in the description. And I also have a Amazon influencer page where I've got um, aquaponics gears, pumps, uni seals, root pouches all listed so you can check it all out if you in the states and you shop on Amazon. Lizzie's just bought the ball down so I know it's time to go. Before I go though I need to thank the awesome folks over on Patreon. Uh, one of our uh, patrons over there, Ian Ronald, actually made the Ikijimi spike. Thank you very much Ian. He threw it in with a couple of knives I bought off him. I'll leave a uh, link down in the description to Ian's Facebook page where he shows all his wares and there'll also be the links as always to all the super contributors. Thank you very much for folks so go down there and check them out and show them some love if you go and visit them i will leave it there though i do hope you're all well and happy and that your gardens and systems are booming and i'll catch you next clip cheers all have a top one you need to bring it closer come on i know <laughs> see you folks